What is up, FIFA faithful? Bearhams here, and welcome to episode six, the start of season two. And before we get into any gameplay, let's talk about the many things that occurred off camera. Starting with departures, Tom Andrews, one of our bright stars, will be heading on loan for a year. Good thing is there's no payback deal with that. It's just one year and then he's back. Next, we have Toby Harding, a guy that started early on in the season last year, but just could not crack on. Same with Dexter Osborne. He's going to Oostersons for 130,000 euros. And we have Alicio Shadler on loan. He's going to Poland. Uh, that does have a buyback clause, but we'll see what happens with his growth there. Next, we have Oliver Neal, one of the backups that we tried out. That just did not work whatsoever. He's going to Shamrock Rovers for 220,000 euro. And then we have Jake Burnett, another goalkeeper that is going, just could not crack it. He is at Bradford City for 120,000 euro. Then we have Cathal McWilliams, an Irish striker who just, he had that one assist and then did absolutely nothing. Uh, he's going back to Ireland, playing for Derry City for 210,000 euros. Then we have Harry Pearson going to Finn Harps on a loan. Already paying some dividends there in terms of overall, as we'll show here, he's up to a 55. He was actually at a 50. Our penultimate departure is Kean Broderick, the third goalkeeper we brought in last year, and he'll be heading to Dundalk for 300,000 euros. I could probably see him playing in a better spot. He does have potential to him. It just, whenever we played him, he would just give up four or five goals, just wasn't ready yet. And then this is the big one, Patrick Graham, one of our star players last year, 10 goals, 11 assists in all competitions. Gladback, they had an offer we could not refuse, 20 million euro. And yeah, he's already 79 overall, starting in the Bundesliga. It makes sense. I mean, imagine a 79 overall playing in League Two like that. Sadly, we had to let him go, but the dividends are there, 20 million and we've sure spent it all right. To make it fair, I spent most of the money on new scouts. So we have Sauli Petola from Finland. He'll be in England. Yeah, it's a little mixed up here as you go on. Uh, Curtis Davis, he is in Wales for three months. And then we have Jesse Page, who's in Finland. I think I'll have him and uh, Patella swap. With Patrick Graham's absence, we've made a lot of signings and a lot of good signings too from the free agency. They're all free transfers starting. We have Patrick Finlay, 65 overall striker can also play as a cam 1.5 million euro evaluation already has some decent stats and we have toby lundberg as we are going to a five at the back he'll be that star left back and then we have aaron knowles a solid replacement for pearson at six foot two 67 overall man has a man bun already doing good as you'll uh, see later on in the highlights and we have another striker in Dexter Dean. This is more of an old school type of League Two striker. A guy that's more about strength. Uh, stats not there, but he's just a big fella that we could possibly use. Big old Dexter Dean. He also has a pretty solid name. We have Riley Davis helping uh, fill out that back three in terms of center back. 65 overall. We need a couple more there as well. And then we have Cody Rogerson, our newest goalkeeper doesn't mean that we got rid of Alfie Guest. He's just going to be our cup goalie. Cody Rogerson is our starting goalie. So I, I think it's going to work out just fine having the two goalkeeper rotation. Another center back is Ossian Lettinen. Yeah, we have another center back from Finland. This one's a lot better though. So I see 80 strength, 72 stamina, great defensive awareness, as well as heading accuracy, despite being only five foot 10. And then easily our best signing in terms of center backs, William Bates, six foot five. Yeah, he's a big fella. And uh, he's just going to fit in perfectly, as we'll talk about a little more later. And then we have another striker, Farouk Zebramani. I want to call him Zebra. He is the Zebra. Uh, great strength. I was surprised. I didn't remember seeing 74 strength on him, but, you know, decent sprint speed for the level that we're at. I have high expectations for him. Him and Monk together, I think a lot of good can come from that. Center mid is... Uh... Next, we have center mid Zach Bennett from Canada. And also, if you hear some rumbling and bumbling about, that's a cat. So, my bad. Uh, yes, back to Zach Bennett, Canadian center mid. 
Uh, he's looking as that third choice center mid behind Knowles and Billy Wilson. And we also signed this guy in Cody Kelly as a backup right back. Currently, Lamont has a starting job. And Cody Kelly does have a better overall, but we'll keep it with Lamont because he does have the higher potential, and I see a lot more coming out of him. So that'll do it for all of the transactions during this summer transfer window. In our first big challenge of the season, we take on promotion candidates, Northampton. No matter what, I will always have a soft spot for Northampton, as I did a save with them in FIFA 19. Not only that, I still have the kit that was signed by the entire team that I bought on eBay for only $20. Yeah, no kidding, $20. Yeah, it's been an interesting season so far as currently after five games, we're doing just fine. We're in the promotion, we're in the thick of it, but just the goals have not been there. As Lettinen, interesting run by the center back as I think he's just come to his senses. Oh, also we have this guy, yeah, Ati Samuel. He is our, might have been alluded to earlier, but uh, he's one of our newest players. Oh, there's a chance there by Monk. Uh, he's okay despite being a couple ticks lower than Coffee in terms of overall, I think he's better. And honestly, I have no clue what to do with Coffee. Coffee is our highest rated player, but when it comes to Cam, he's just terrible at distribution. I don't really want to put him at the eight, but we'll just have to. There's maybe a pass here for Monk, but not quite. It's Knowles. Does he run by Zamani? Here is Zebra, heads it down. Does take the shot, nice rocket, but he'll try to get the header and it goes off the post. Nice effort there by Zebra, but it looks like after 45 minutes, no score as of yet. Ooh, nice play here. Monk takes it, fires all one just wide. Nice play by Samuel to win it to Monk. He does see the run by Zebra. Zebra bats it down, takes it, scores, well done. A nice pass from Joel Monk to his new strike partner, Zebra. That's what we needed. Finlay is going to find Lundberg. Lundberg does see Monk. Monk is there. Gets the header. Oh, and just wide. Nice interception there by Bates. Saw that play coming as Knowles taking on some pressure. We'll find Wilson. Might be a nice run here from Finlay. He'll chest it down. Well played by the Irishman, who does take the shot and scores. A nice counterattack as it probably will be another assist for Joel Monk. We got the two goal advantage now, and it is the perfect opportunity to make some subs, but let's just bask in that beautiful pass by Joel Monk, who has turned into our key distributor. Oh, there's a shot. Oh, they got lucky there. Did take a deflection. Poor Cody Rogerson sitting on a clean sheet the entire game, but it is Hoskins. Instead of picking up the ball, is just going to waste time by celebrating, and I can't complain about that. And that'll do it. Nice interception there by Mackey, and that's a good start to the episode. Two to one. We beat the top team in League Two. Great performance by Joel Monk, getting two assists on the afternoon. And nice goals from his strike partners, Patrick Finlay, as well as Farouk the Zebra Zebramani. One of the first center backs we had, Leon Chamberlain, has been sold to Port Vale for half a million euros and it's for the best and it'll be interesting to see if he is actually played simulating the fixture against sutton united is a midweek tilt and we end up losing it is Ati samuel with the goal in the 40th to equalize but it's wilson with the game winner in the 75th second game of the episode it's a promotion six pointer as we take on eighth place swindon town i do have to say i like the swindon town kits not only they're home but they're away I was considering them as a team, but again, just wanted to use Rochdale for that crown oil money. Ball to Farouk, slips that through. Knowles, if he gets the ball in time, which just a step too far. Nice there. Oh, wow. Well done, Billy Wilson. That is to Zamani. Zebramani shoots and scores. Well done. All started with a great interception by Billy Wilson, our captain. Yeah, this is a completely different team from last year. That's a centering ball through. Well saved by Rogerson, and that'll do it for the first 45. Do get that goal from Zebra Mani. Similar to last game, we are taking off Zebra, and we're bringing on Finlay, but just a little early because Zebra is very tired. He wanted that run from Lundberg. He'll eventually get it. Not any big guys in the box, but Finlay keeps it in. Takes it and scores! 
Well done. Great composure from our Irish striker. As yeah, we're going to look at this replay again. Once again, just takes it down, takes his time, and just enough to get it past Wallacott. Well done all around this time. It just wasn't Joel Monk and the strikers. Had some help from Coffey with his assist, as well as Lundberg. Before our third and final game, we'll quickly go through our youth academy and talk about the players for just a split second. Nicholas Fisher, 59 overall. I know his potential is horrible, but I'm thinking, you know, if we're going to at some point leave this side, I do want to bring in some players that, you know, are of potential in this league. And Nicholas Fisher fits the bill. 59, as I said, great physicality perfect CDM. I've been thinking of actually sending him up, playing him in a couple cup games. Yami Emil, this guy is a different matter. Great potential, great overall. You know, I, I could bring him up soon. L Lloyd Jenkins, I was about to say Leroy Jenkins, 57 overall. I just got him in a recent Youth Academy poll. Uh, great potential, great overall. Jay Barrett, kind of like Neil Fisher. Mikko Leto from Finland, 55 overall center forward. We also have Tom Gwilt, who is a striker, but with his stats, I honestly see him as a CDM. Doesn't have the best shooting or passing, but that defending and dribbling has me enticed. Stanley Barnes, 54 overall, 72 to 94. We also have Owen Harper, striker, 54 overall. So I have Archie Marks, Tom Rice, Peter Skullian from Northern Ireland, Lee Mabe. Matthew Venice, who we could play at a cam. I'm interested. He has great potential, but it's one of those where he's put in a wrong position. Oh my God, skill moves and weak foot. Sweet Jesus. Okay, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he might be a cam. And then we also have Jonathan Short, who, if six foot tall is short, then I'm a midget. Simulating a couple games, the first one against Accrington Stanley at home at the Crown Oil Arena, and we do get the victory, and it is Aaron Knowles with the deciding goal. Next, we have an away fixture against Crawley Town. And after 90 minutes, we had another victory. It is Lamont on the wing, getting a goal in the 23rd, and then Samuel in the 63rd. Final simulated game, it is against Newport County. And I would play this one since they are a team that is fighting for promotion. And we do lose two to one, Monk with the early goal. But there's one reason. Uh, it's because we have our final game in our little group stage of the uh, Johnson Paint Trophy or whatever you want to call it, the Papa John's Trophy. And we've already bowed out of the EFL Cup. So let's try the Papa John's. Let's see what happens. We are playing a stronger side than I initially anticipated. We have our starting strikers up top. We got Samuel, Knowles. We also have Bates and Davis. We do have Yoko Linen playing there as well. Lamont on the left side instead. A lot of games to play for this Papa John's. I don't know what it is. I know there was a bowl game called the PapaJohns.com Trophy. Oh, that's a nice through ball. Alfie Guess, great save. All we really need to do here is secure the victory, get us the four points. Oh, a chance. Oh, right off the post. Not ideal. Maybe something here. Monk is through. Oh, man. Joel Monk takes it, scores. Wow, what an answer. As soon as we give up a goal, you know, that, they're just fighting for Alfie Guest. They love a little guest. Well timed this time, it is Zebra getting the assist. Able to find Joel Monk. Nice to see him get his first goal on camera this season. Oh, no. Oh, Bates got turned around. A guy who has been near flawless this season in the league. Gives a goal yet again to Floyd. Ooh, nice block there. Could be something here. Through ball. Monk is onside. Takes it. Oh, it's blocked. And can't get the rebound shot. Oh, we're playing now. As Monk takes it. Maybe a chance for the volley, and he puts it in. All right. Joel Monk has a brace. It's tied up yet again. Man, this has been a topsy-turvy match so far. There's a cross in the box. Ball's bouncing about. Guess we'll catch it, and that will do it. So it is a draw. I have no clue what's going to happen now. So yeah, it's a bit of a cliffhanger as uh, the final game of this little group stage will be done on November 9th. That will be done off camera during the next episode. Uh, Cheltenham against Bristol Rovers. If one of them wins, we're in no matter what because we'll have the two points. If they draw, 
that's where things get a little weird. Finish off the episode, 11 games into the season, 20 points, sitting in fifth. Not quite an automatic spot, as we are four points out of that area, but still where we want to be in terms of the board. And you know, the team just keeps on improving, and I can't complain with that. So yes, this will be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as you're playing it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. This has been Bear Hands, and as always, to the loo.